mentioned uh, they were very uh, integrated with us and were quite uh, good. You know, they, you think they might be standoffish, but they're not. They're very nice lads. And it was a, a pretty horrible day, wasn't it? It was cold anyway. I can't remember that. It was. We weren't cold. <laughs> we were running about and you keep warm. And was it the highlight of your, your playing career? Oh, yes, I... Uh, uh, I mean, it, we were quite young, we were mid-twenties, mid some of us, and uh, we did... You don't come against people like that very often, and it was good to play against them. For, it was 45 years ago, can you believe it? 45 years, yes. Can't believe it, no. <laughs> Atmosphere like in the town at the time? Well, it, there was a lot of uh, despair because of the, the lifeboat uh, disaster. That was the second one in my lifetime in Fraserburgh. It's, a, it's unfortunate for a, one's town to have that. And uh, But the game came and uh, it gave the town a wee lift. A big crowd, six and a half thousand for for a, a game in, in Freerborough, and uh, yes, I think it was a, a good day that day. Of course, it raised a huge amount of money as well. Yes, well, you've got to thank a, a club like Celtic for uh, responding like that. I mean, I don't know how often they get requests like that, but there was no problem. They were asked and it, it, it came forward and it was really good. Do you think you'd ever see the like of that again? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, you really fielded their best side. Yes, well, at half time I said it was 2 0. I thought we were doing very well, but uh, really in the second half they just went up a gear and we weren't at the races after that. Was there any particular but moment that you remember? Anything that, that Jock Steen said or anything from the players? No, not really. Jock Steen was very quiet. He did, did all his. Uh, managing in the background but uh, you, you can sense that that guy was in charge when he walked into a room and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, do you ever think of the game now? Well, I've thought more about it this last two or three days but it's a long time ago but I often, I've got a photograph of the team and our players are mixed in with the photograph and it, it, you look at it and you say wow Dougie Mill will say the same thing. Why were we even there with players of that stature? And a, a great story for your family as well. Yes, for the grandchildren and stuff like that. We are, of course, marking the anniversary of the, the lifeboat tragedy itself. What kind of impact do you think that had on the town? Well, it, it was a disaster. I mean, the whole town just went flat. Uh, Eighteen years before, there was one in 1952, where I, I, I actually lost my father in that uh, lifeboat disaster. So in then e 18 years on, I was playing a game to raise funds for the, the families of the... So it, uh, it's a fishing town, it, it does make a big impact. And it must have raised sort of mixed emotions when you played on the field that day. Given yes. You knew exactly mm -hmm. what those families were going through. Right. But a big crowd, you know, running out, and, uh, a big crowd was really a good feeling. And a great thing for the, the town to do for the families. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you very oh. much, Jimmy. That was excellent. You did really well. You were brilliant. Uh, so, what about the name for my family? Okay, just your name and uh, anything about what you had for your lunch or anything like that will be fine. Harvey McDonald. Okay, I'll just say, it, say a wee bit more, just so we know how loud you're going to speak. Uh, for the half of my lunch, uh, I had uh, cheese and toast on my lunch. Cheese okay, and toast, fine. perfect. Right, Is that okay? That's fine, yeah. Robbie, thank you very much. Oh, good, okay. Uh, what are your memories of the match? Uh, well, it's a long time ago. Uh, I've never seen so many people in the Bellsley. Uh, 6,000. Six and a half thousand people, and I believe the capacity now is about twelve hundred, so wouldn't it be allowed now? Uh, 
And there were people outside on the street trying to watch the match as well, weren't there? Yeah, yeah so I believe. Uh, uh, I didn't start the match, as you come on, about 25 minutes to, to play. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Chasing shadows. <laughs> Do you feel that you were outplayed? Oh, well and truly. <laughs> It was just an experience to be on the same field as all the star players. Do you remember what the atmosphere was like? Oh, the atmosphere was incredible. Uh, you just you couldn't believe how many people were watching. Uh, it was a TV camera on top of the clinic. Uh, I've seen a black and white version, but I've never seen a colour version. But I believe there's one in a go. You got a chance to... to um mingle, I suppose, with the players as well afterwards. What, what were they like? What was Jock Steen like? Uh, I can remember sitting between uh, I think Bobby Lennox and Stevie Chalmers at the meal at night. Uh, and I remember him asking uh, how much money I was getting paid. Well, I was an amateur anyway, so I wasn't getting paid any money. Uh, so it was like a unique experience for them because they were getting so much money. <laughs> Did you ask them how much they were getting paid? No, no. <laughs> and do you remember what Jock Steen was like? Uh, not a lot. He was looking at the other side of the hall. Uh, he was very... Uh, what, would you, what would you say? Uh, unapproachable, I thought. Um, he had a lot of respect for him. Do you think you'd ever see the like of that kind of game being played now, where where Celtic would field their best players? No, no. They would send a pool of players up, but nay, uh, nay a team as strong as they sent up. I mean, it was their European Cup team uh, just a few weeks after. And I believe they lost 2-0. But it was unbelievable what they did. And, of course, you're an avid fan, still an avid fan. Yes, I've been mean, a season ticket holder for a, and a sponsor for since 1983. And do you ever think about what happened here 45 years ago? Uh, not really, no. Uh, I sort of just came out of the blue. I was in the garden yesterday and my wife said, it's uh, STV for you on the phone. I says, you're winding me up. <laughs> she says, no, there's somebody on, on the phone from STV. What was it like in the town at the time? So the whole town would have been excited to have Celtic up here. Yeah, but it was a sad time for the uh, for the town losing so many people. And what difference do you think this match made? Uh, well, it raised a lot of money. Uh, I believe two thousand pounds, which is a lot of money uh, back in that day. And do you think it gave the I suppose the club a chance to feel like they were doing something positive after all that. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a great thing and uh, Celtic were very good in coming up. Oh, was it the highlight of your, your playing career? Oh, I suppose it was. I, <laughs> I didn't play that long, but uh, luckily I was with the Broch for the, that two years and one of the years Celtic came up here. And tell me why you're not in that photograph. <laughs> because I was in the toilet. <laughs> And do you ever think that was just the worst time to go? Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, I regret not being in the photograph. <laughs> Maybe you can superimpose me in the photograph. <laughs> uh, Finlay Noble, I'm chairman of the uh, Fraser Brown Football Club. Fantastic, is that okay? Uh, yeah. Perfect. How big a, or how important is this in the club's history, this 1970 match? Well, we're very proud history. Um, there's one or two significant events, and this is by far. Um, the, the biggest one is for the town. I mean, uh, the, given the circumstances with the with the lifeboat disaster. So, what do you think it meant to the players to be able to play Celtic? Well, I can, I can only imagine. I mean, given, given the current bunch, um, how big a, a tie it would have been for them. Uh, I mean, they, they played final in the, the European Cup final a little over a week later. So, for that. Um, a level of player to be here in Fraserburgh running about Bellsdy Park and for, the, for that players to be playing against them it must have been a great experience for them You're a chairman of our football club do you think anything like that would ever happen now? No, you, you, I think you would you'd be quite possibly get a game um, because I think Scotland's a, a quite a tight-knit community and, and I'm pretty sure that one of the bigger clubs would, would, 
would play, but whether they would they would send their, their first eleven up, uh, I, I, I don't imagine. And certainly not so close to sort of an important game for them. So looking back, you know, what what do you think of it? Looking back, their records as chairman, what do you make of it all? I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, to look back, I mean, <clears throat> you've got to be mindful of the why the occasion took place. But even today, just being here, I mean, can I was a kid in the seventies. Um, okay, I was maybe young for that, but these guys were our heroes to me when I was a, when I, a kid. Okay, watching Fraser, but I, um, so just to, to be here with them is shows how important it is to the club. Um, but just get the photos, the scrapbooks we've all been looking at today just shows how much it means to them as well. Fantastic. That's great. Good. Thank you very much, Finley. Yes. Perfect. Thank you.